Hey guys, Jim here. Today I want to share with you a quick little repair I'm doing. So if you've got a home theater system set up in your house, a little bit like mine, you'll have a projector, and of course up in front you'll have a projection screen. If you've got the manual type, like I do, you may have run into a few issues, like you pull it down and it drags quite a bit, or you pull it down and it just won't stay down. So the latter is what I'm facing. I pull it down and after 12 or 13 tries, I actually get it to stick. So through a little trial and error, I'm going to show you how you can take off the end caps, clean up the gears a little bit, and then put it all back together to have it running nice and new again. So without further ado, let's get started. Take off. Don't know why they had self-tapping screws. It's like they whipped this stuff up together real fast. Okay, this is going to be a surprise. Holy sh... So, it's spring-loaded. That's a given. What I wonder is, how will I load up the spring again once I put it back in? So, I want to show you the end view of the projection screen. This is the main rod here that wraps up the screen. It's got a flat end so that I can use a wrench to tighten up the screen. Once it's rolled all the way up inside of this housing, then I will continue to turn with the wrench about 10 or 15 times per online recommendations just to give some added tension to the spring that's inside. Upon doing that, one other thing to point out is the uh, pawls that are in the system itself. I wanted to show you that in particular because it's rather interesting. Those are the uh, pawl gears. They engage with the ratchet on the rod itself, and that's what allows you to pull the screen down and allow it to tighten up on it and not move. And then later on, when you pull again, it loosens up and rolls the screen back into place. So one last thing that we need to do before we make our jig is measure the short end of this flat end rod. I'm reading about one eighth of an inch, which seems reasonable. And if you want, you can always measure a second time, which I like to do, just to make sure you didn't screw it up by accident when you were measuring. So once again, one eighth of an inch. Let's get started on that jig. All right. Now I've shaved off the extra metal on my tool so that I can sneak this thing in here and grab onto the tensioning bar and save all the torque I've put onto this thing after I've wrapped up the screen. Okay, I did a dry fit. It looks good. So before I forget, let's use this uh, zip tie to get this housing in the correct shape. So I've used two here. I probably only needed one, but hopefully this will get it nice and snug where I need it to be. I don't know if you can tell, that's a little bit tighter now. And hopefully, yep, need to go a little bit tighter. <laughs> that might have been too tight to get this on. All right, excellent. And Okay, I've wrapped this thing up a lot of times now. Hoping I can get it. Reality is, r rolling this thing up by hand over here, uh, it's annoying, but it's not difficult. The hard part is getting the end cap on when it's under tension. One. Two extra turns. A third might be necessary, but I'm going to test it out to see how this feels once it's upright and installed. Here's the tricky part. Okay, this is the hardest part. 
I am going to lift this up so that I can continue torquing this thing clockwise to make it vertical so that I can center it onto this piece. It's extremely difficult, I'm not going to lie. And Okay, I think it's on. I really think it's on. Now I just have to get the shim out and screw it in place. Wish me luck. I'm actually lined up with this screw hole over here, so I'm going to put that in now, and hopefully that'll help keep it in place while I work it from the other side. Still a lot of tension on this thing, which worries me. Okay. All right, so I've got it back up on the ceiling. I uh, used the ladder in a very comical way. I wish I'd recorded that for you guys because I did it by myself. Um, I just stacked a box on top of this, got that side high enough so that I could screw in this side, and then I went over there quickly and screwed that side in. But, as you can see now, down, stays down. Um, I've done this multiple times, and it works great. It's a lot harder than I thought it would be, but definitely very doable in, say, half a day. If you don't have the right tools, you need to go buy some like I did and make some like I did. But otherwise, very much doable at home and maybe even necessary to do once or twice over the lifetime of your screen. So I've had this guy for about two years. I can't say that's too bad, but my next screen will definitely be motorized. So thanks for watching, and I hope you can fix your screen too.